Welcome back to Networks Tech Talk, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we've got a great conversation for you today. The user demand for data is insatiable, and fixed wireless access, or FWA, is one method being used to fulfill the need for more data. FWA is another offering to provide high-speed internet access to homes, businesses, and remote areas without relying on traditional wired connections like fiber or cable lines for the last mile of connectivity. FWA is a popular technology globally, with the GSA's latest report stating that FWA is being offered around the world by 455 operators in 173 countries and territories, with the U.S. adding millions of subscribers per year. Today, we're going to talk with Sanjay Kanali, Head of Technology for the Networks Business at Samsung Electronics America, about the capabilities and prospects for fixed wireless access, the expanded business opportunities with FWA, and what Samsung is doing to help foster its growth. Welcome, Sanjay. Thanks for having me, Tim. So let's start with, is the demand for FWA growing among broadband users? 7-Eleven analysts reports that in the U.S. alone, we'll have 14 to 18 million subscribers by 2027. And T-Mobile reported last year the state of FWA. According to that report, they're adding 500,000 subscribers for every quarter. So that means it's like 2 million subscribers every year. So this is growing exponentially. So other than the benefits of solving for the last mile, which is a strong and frequent argument for FWA versus fiber, do you see the FWA economics as favorable for operators? So first of all, mobile network operators are facing a dilemma about the growth as well as the monetization of the 5G. Right? FWA will solve both of those problems. CPE cost is a key factor and CPE installation is another key factor. And overall CPE market, CP market is increasing. Uh, as for ABI research, I think there will be 47 million CP shipments in 2026. And there are also vendor choices that are increasing a lot. According to the reports, there are around 550 CP vendors for LTE alone and 225 plus uh, CP vendors for points. So with the more choices on the CP vendors because of the demand on FWA, the, they should improve the FWA service economics already. And then self-installation of CPU would further enhance the FWS service model. So it would it would make uh, mobile operators to get not only the FWS subscribers and also the additional mobile subscribers because of the network enhancements that they would do. So let's talk frequency bands, right? Are, are mid-band like CBRS and C-band best going to be primarily used here or will millimeter wave also play a part? Right now it's primarily going to be mid-bands. Uh, and as we know, T-Mobile is using a BRS band and there's a lot of options on the C-band. So the mid-band is going to play a very key role. The, right now, what we're seeing is the FWA average use, usage per month is around 341 CP. The national broadband average users uh, usage is around 587 CP. It means that FWA subscribers are going to go to pretty high data usage soon. So the, the mid bands are already being deployed. So the only bands left is millimeter wave. And millimeter wave is a great option because they have a lot of, they can offer a lot of capacity. So the millimeter wave capacity is not only going to help the FWA customers, it will also help the mobile subscribers to experience in new data speeds. So this will in turn help the operators to get new, uh, new enable the new applications and also come up with a creative plan script that will buy subscribers also. And is fixed wireless access mainly going to be a rural play or do you think that there's also a market in urban areas? Yeah, it certainly has the reputation of uh, having just a rural play. But if you look at uh, T-Mobile's uh, last year's report, they're getting 65% of the new FWA subscribers from suburban and urban areas. So there are a lot of subscribers coming from suburban and urban areas. And the FWA networks are enhancing the network capacity. That's actually not only helping the FWA subscribers, in some cases, they're actually giving a new experience to the mobile subscribers too. So what companies are involved in delivering fixed wireless? Are we mainly talking about the MNOs? And do you think FWA is a threat for more than just the DSL providers? FWA is, is a new field. So it's uh, it's going to be a new space for many, many uh, service providers here. So MNOs are there and they are they are big. As we talked about T-Mobile and also Verizon. Apart from the MNOs, there are MSOs and the wireless internet service providers. 
And there are also regional operators. Uh, they're, they're pretty interesting too, is that they are, they are providing FW services in certain geographical areas. And they are offering the FW services mainly using CBRS, but some of the operators are using PCS as well as AWS and and also the BRS brand, which is also called Band 41. So do you see federal funding helping with the growth of fixed wireless access? Absolutely. Fiber is not an option for everywhere, right? The lack of population in certain geographies and topographical uh, challenges, it's uh, the FW is going to play a huge role. Between the BEAD and RDOF and other programs, the federal broadband infrastructure programs will have $90 billion. Even a tiny fraction of those funds will, will push the FWS to get to big program. So now let's talk about Samsung. What is Samsung's approach when it comes to fixed wireless access? So we are, we are the leaders enabling the operators to harness the next wave of FW application. As we discussed, the FWA is going to be predominantly served by mid-band and millimeter wave. And let's talk the millimeter wave first. I mean, we are the first ones to get an FCC that get per millimeter wave base station. Now, since then, we we keep up, we, we continue to improve the technology. And we came up with an innovative products combining the RUs as well as the DU and the integrated product that enable operators to deploy not only on the towers, but also on the poles and the street furniture. That's going to be really important for an FWA because they can focus on the internet of MWUs and all. And we're continuing our leadership in that by bringing up the dual band products. So we'll have a 28 gigahertz and 39 gigahertz in a single uh, compact radio. And on the mid band side, obviously we have a products for every band and uh, in the US and across the, across the globe. But one key thing which I want to mention here is the, is the multi-user MIMO. Uh, it's, it's basically massive MIMO technology in the mid band will enable the operators to use the same frequency to serve two or more users simultaneously. That means they can get, they can serve more users with the same spectrum. So I wanted to note the signal research group uh, validation of a, a network in tendency powered by Samsung. Samsung can provide double the layers uh, compared to a competition. So it's, it shows that we are we are leading the research and the and the feature set for the mid band products. Thank you so much for your time today, Sanjay. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure talking to you. FWA has emerged as a powerful enabler in the mobile landscape. As demand for high-speed internet continues to surge, FWA's user base is projected to grow substantially, bridging the digital divide and enhancing connectivity for millions worldwide. Beyond its traditional rural applications, FWA has proven its worth in urban and suburban environments, supplementing and enhancing existing networks. We're all excited to see the advancements and proliferation of fixed wireless access we've discussed today continue to advance around the globe. And to our audience, thank you for participating in today's podcast. We look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech Talk.